Welcome to our lesson on chemical equilibrium. We'll be looking at chemical equilibrium basics, how to calculate the equilibrium constant, and Le Chatelier's principle. We'll then look at chemical equilibrium graphs and relate them to industry. A reversible reaction is a chemical in which the product can be converted back to reactants under suitable conditions. A reversible reaction is shown by the two arrows here. There is a half arrow to the right, a forward reaction, and a half arrow to the left, a backward or reverse reaction. If we study the general reversible reaction and we measure the concentration of one of the reactants, and one of the products versus time, a graph similar to the next one may be produced. Chemical equilibrium can also be represented graphically by plotting the forward and reverse reaction rates against time. Let's look at this graph in more detail. When a reaction starts, we have reactants in a reaction vessel and no product. Only eight particles of A and four particles of BC. As the reactant bonds break and products start forming, the rate of the forward reaction decreases with only molecules of each reactant. Now that there are two product particles each, the rate of the reverse reaction increases as seen by the slope of the graph between zero and the equilibrium point. When the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, the graph shows a line parallel to the time axes. This is known as dynamic equilibrium. The amount of the substances stay the same at this point because the reaction-making product is the same speed as the reaction-making reactants. We can also plot the concentration of each substance involved in a chemical reaction against time. Be very careful because these graphs can look a lot like the rate graphs we've just studied. This type of graph is only looking at the amount of each substance. Here we see that a reactant X is decreasing while the product Y is made. Since this reaction is reversible, when Y is produced from X, they may react to form X from Y again, using the reverse reaction. After a certain time, the concentrations of all reactants and products remain constant. The concentration of the reactants never falls to zero. It also follows that if the rates of forward reaction and the reverse reaction are plotted against time, the graph shown below may be obtained. An important thing to keep in mind is that when equilibrium has been reached, the concentrations of X and Y do not change with time. They've reached a constant value. The region of the graph after 80 seconds shows this. So in summary, dynamic equilibrium is the state in a reversible reaction in which the forward and reverse reactions are occurring at the same rate in a closed system. Let's look at an example of reversible reaction. Many chemical reactions give rise to products which can react in such a way as to give back the original reactants. Two NO2 molecules react to give N2O4. Note that nitrogen dioxide is a reddish-brown gas and dinitrogen tetroxide is a pale yellow gas. At 20 degrees Celsius, two molecules of the gas NO2 can react to form one molecule of another gas, N2O4. But this gas, in turn, is not very stable and can dissociate at 20 degrees Celsius into two molecules of NO2. We say that this reaction is reversible and indicate this by the two small arrows shown. 
In order to maintain a state of dynamic equilibrium, the system must be closed. This means that it's not exposed to the environment to allow external chemicals to react. Let's look at the factors that influence the chemical equilibrium of a chemical reaction. A scientist by the name of Le Chatelier studied the factors that influence chemical equilibrium. We'll look at the three factors that influence equilibrium. Pressure, concentration and temperature. It might seem familiar talking about these factors because they also affect the rates of chemical reactions. We discuss them because a factor which affects the rate of the forward reaction differently to the reverse reaction will affect the position of the equilibrium. First we look at Le Chatelier's principle. It states that if a system in equilibrium is subjected to a stress, the equilibrium will shift in the direction which tends to relieve that stress. This is a generalization which enables us to predict the way reversible chemical reactions will be affected if a change in conditions is applied at equilibrium. The simulation for the harbour process shows how we change the concentration, pressure and temperature and how the equilibrium changes. The concentration of the nitrogen, hydrogen, even the pressure and temperature affect equilibrium. Pressure, concentration and temperature are the only factors which will affect equilibrium. Surface area and catalysts also change the rates of reaction, but they increase the rates of both forward and reverse reactions. Let's look at each factor in turn and apply it to a hypothetical situation. Let's look at concentration. Looking at the simulation for A plus B producing C plus D, as we change the concentration of A plus B, we have to adjust the concentrations of C plus D in order to return it to a state of dynamic equilibrium. Similarly, if we change the concentration of C plus D, we need to adjust A plus B in order to return to a state of dynamic equilibrium. Let's go back and look at the equation of A plus 2B reversibly producing C plus D and ask the following questions. What would happen if you change the conditions by increasing the concentration of A? According to Le Chatelier, the position of equilibrium will shift in such a way as to oppose the change. That means that the position of equilibrium will shift so that the concentration of A decreases again. We thus say that the position of equilibrium shifts to the right, favouring the forward reaction. Let's look at what would happen if you change the conditions by decreasing the concentrations of A. Let's look at the equation. According to Le Chatelier, the position of equilibrium will shift so that the concentration of A increases again. That means that more C and D will react to replace the A that's been removed from the system. We thus say that the position of equilibrium shifts to the left, favouring the reverse reaction. A plus 2B reversibly produces C plus D. Let's look at a practical of the effect of concentration on equilibrium. The reaction shows two different positions of equilibrium on the left and right.
On the left, the pink cobalt hydrate ion. On the right, the cobalt chloride ion. The ions might look a bit strange, but they simply change color because of the electrons around the metal ion. Now, if the forward reaction is favored, more blue ions are made as products. If the reverse reaction is favored, more pink ions are made. The color in the middle is made where there are roughly the same amount of both ions. It's important to know that all of these solutions are at equilibrium, but the ratios of product and reactant is different, giving us a different color. So when we add something like sodium chloride in dropwise form, we have increased the concentration of chloride ions. Because the system wants to restore the equilibrium, it acts in a way to reduce the chloride ion concentration again. So the forward reaction is favored, shown by the solution turning blue. In summary, if we increase the concentration of one substance, the equilibrium shifts to the opposite side of the reaction. If we decrease the concentration, the equilibrium shift is to the same side of the reaction as the decreased substance. Let's now look at pressure. This only applies to reactions involving gases like this one. So what would happen if you change the conditions by increasing the pressure? According to Le Chatelier, the position of equilibrium will move in such a way as to oppose the change. This means that the position of equilibrium will shift so that the pressure is decreased again. Pressure is caused by gas molecules hitting the sides of their container. The more molecules you have in the container, the higher the pressure will be. The system can reduce the pressure by reacting in such a way as to produce fewer molecules. In this case, there are three molecules on the left-hand side of the equation, but only two on the right. By forming more C and D, the system causes the pressure to decrease. Increasing the pressure on a gas reaction shifts the position of equilibrium towards the side with fewer molecules. A gas plus 2B gas forms C gas plus D gas. The position of equilibrium moves to the right if you increase the pressure of the reaction. So what would happen if you change the conditions by decreasing the pressure? The equilibrium will shift in such a way that the pressure increases again or the volume decreases. It can do so by producing more molecules. In this case, the position of equilibrium will shift towards the left-hand side of the reaction, favoring the reverse reaction. A gas plus 2B gas forms C gas plus D gas. The position of equilibrium moves to the left if you decrease the pressure of the reaction. What happens if there are the same number of molecules on both sides of the equilibrium reaction? Increasing the pressure has no effect on the position of the equilibrium, as you have to have the same number of molecules on both sides. The equilibrium cannot move in any way that will reduce the pressure again. An example of this is the reaction. There are two moles on the right-hand side and two moles on the left-hand side. Thus, the system is not affected by changes in pressure. Let's look at a practical of how pressure changes affect equilibrium. If the container is made smaller, the reaction making few molecules is favored. We can see this because the container goes darker because the NO2 is squeezed closer together. But then the color suddenly goes lighter, showing the N2O4 is being made. Let's now look at how temperatures affect chemical equilibrium. 
When working with the temperature, you need to know if heat is given out or absorbed during the reaction. Assume that our forward reaction is exothermic. Heat is therefore released. This shows that 250 kilojoules is given off. This is shown by the negative sign. When one mole of A reacts completely with two moles of B, for reversible reactions, the value is always given as if the reaction was one way, so in the forward direction. The reverse reaction, the conversion of C and D into A and B, would be endothermic by the same amount. 250 kilojoules is evolved when A and B react completely to give C and D. A plus 2B forms C plus D. Delta H equals negative 250 kilojoule per mole. 250 kilojoules is absorbed when C and D react completely to give A and B. Two basic rules need to be followed here. The increase in temperature favours the endothermic reaction. The decrease in temperature favours the exothermic reaction. What would happen if you change the conditions by increasing the temperature? Well, according to Le Chatelier, the position of equilibrium will move in such a way as to oppose the change. That means that the position of equilibrium will move so that the temperature is decreased again. Suppose the system is in equilibrium at 100 degrees Celsius and you increase the temperature to 400 degrees Celsius. You would then ask the questions, how can the reaction counteract the change you've made? How can it cool itself down again? To cool down, it needs to absorb the extra heat that you've just put in. In the case we're looking at, the reverse reaction absorbs heat. The position of equilibrium therefore shifts to the left, favoring the reverse reaction. The new equilibrium mixture contains more A and B and less C and D. If you were wanting to increase the yield of C and D as much as possible, increasing the temperature on a reversible reaction where the forward reaction is exothermic would not work. So what would happen if you changed the conditions by decreasing the temperature? The equilibrium will move in such a way that the temperature increases again. Suppose the system's in equilibrium at 400 degrees Celsius and you reduce the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. The reaction will tend to heat itself up again to return to the original temperature. It can do that by favoring the exothermic reaction. The position of equilibrium will shift to the right, favoring the forward reaction. More A and B are converted into C and D at the lower temperature. Back to the nitrogen dioxide reaction. The forward reaction is exothermic. We can see that because the delta H is less than zero. So the forward reaction makes heat. If we cool the reaction, the reaction tries to fix it by making more heat. The forward reaction's favoured, and the flask turns clear, meaning more N2O4 has been formed. The forward reaction was favoured. In summary, decreasing the temperature of a system in dynamic equilibrium favours the exothermic reaction. The system counteracts the change you have made by making extra heat. Increasing the temperature of a system in dynamic equilibrium 
favours the endothermic reaction. The system counteracts the change you have made by producing more heat. Let's look at an example using H2 gas plus I2 gas forms 2HI gas. Suppose we add some more H2, keeping the volume constant. That causes a stress. What is this stress? The stress is an excess H2 over the value reached at equilibrium. How can this stress be relieved? By removing some H2, that is, decreasing the H2. How can the reaction achieve this? By using some H2 in a reaction with I2. How is the equilibrium affected? It shifted to the right. I hope you've learned how to apply the principles of equilibrium. Join us in our next video.